Hello everyone, I am Sanjay Gupta. I welcome you on Sanjay Gupta Tech School. In this video, I am going to discuss about APEX trigger related interview questions and answers. So these question and answers will be beneficial for fresher as well as experienced candidate so that you can just revise the concepts. So first is like, what is trigger? So it is a common question that is asked. So triggers are initiated when a record is inserted, updated, deleted, or undeleted. We can perform custom operations before or after events to records. Use triggers to do operations that cannot be done by point and click tools provided in Salesforce, like flows. We can do things using triggers that we can do through Apex, including execution of SOQL and DML, or we can call custom methods as well. Triggers can be created for both standard and custom objects. By default, triggers are active as you create them. So this is about trigger. Then next question can be, what is the syntax of trigger? So you can use a keyword trigger, then name of trigger on object API name, and then trigger event. So generally, for example, if you're creating a trigger on account object, so trigger name, we will write as account trigger. And after on, you can write the API of the account. So that is account. If you are using a custom object, or you, if I say like you are creating a trigger on custom object, so custom object API should contain underscore underscore C here. And then uh, you need to put the events inside bracket. So event I will be covering in the uh, later questions. And inside braces, you can write the code uh, which you want to run, or you can you can call the Apex methods as well. Now, if you want to learn like how we can write trigger, how uh, different different use cases are implemented in uh, trigger, so just visit studysalesforce.com and there you will find separate videos for all the trigger concepts and scenarios. Now, what are types of trigger? So we have two types of triggers. One is before triggers and one is after trigger. So use before trigger. It is used to update or validate record values before saved to database. So for example, if you suppose you are creating any account record and upon account record creation, if you want to update that account record particular field only. So in that case, you can use before triggers. Now, if you are inserting any account record and you want to do something on the related record, so in that case, you can use after trigger. So it is used to access field values that are set by the system, such as IDs. So in case of after trigger, IDs will be available. And to make changes in the related and other records, so it is preferred. The records that fire the after trigger are read only. So in case of after trigger, so we have one context variable that is trigger.new. So in case of after trigger, that trigger.new uh, will be in read-only form. But in case of before trigger, it will be in editable. Now, what are the trigger events? So we have before insert, before update, before delete, after insert, after update, after delete, and after undelete. So these are the seven events that you can use. And you don't need to use uh, all of them together. So as per the requirement, you can write these events uh, in your trigger. Now, this is important, trigger context variables. So all trigger defines implicit variables that allow developer to access runtime context. These variables are contained in the system.trigger class. So first we have is executing, so it returns true if the current context of Apex code is a trigger not a VF page, a web service, or an execute anonymous API call. Then we have is insert, so it returns true if trigger was fired due to an insert operation from the Salesforce UI, Apex, or API. Then is update is similar, so it, it will be uh, like returning true if a trigger was fired due to an update operation. Then is delete returns true if trigger was fired due to delete operation, so these is insert, is update, is before, basically we write in the trigger code so that we can identify uh, if we want to run the Apex method. So in which 
uh, way we we need to call the apex method so if you want to run any apex method whenever your record is inserted so you need to check uh, whether uh, trigger is running in is insert con context or not like that then is before is after so is before returns to if the trigger was fired before any record was saved and after it will fire when record is saved to the database undelete returns true if the trigger was fired after a record is recovered from the recycle bin size it checks total number of records in a invocable invocation both old and new then we have another question that is trigger dot new versus trigger dot new map so new basically returns a list of new version of s object records so this s object list is available in case of insert update and undelete triggers and the records can only be modified in before trigger so basically uh, you can write it like trigger dot new so it is available in case of insert update and undelete only and uh, uh, if you have before trigger uh, context so in that case uh, you can just modify its value but if you are writing something in after context then you cannot modify it then we have new map so a map of ids to the new version of s object records available in insert before update after update after undelete triggers so it is basically a map which contains id and uh, records then we have trigger dot old versus trigger dot old map so old basically returns a list of old version of s object records available in before update after update before delete and after delete right so in case of insert there won't be any data in old because in insert we have only new version but in case of update we have two versions one is old which is having the old values of the record and one will be having the new values of the record. So old state will be stored in this trigger dot old. Then next is old map. So a map of IDs to the old version of S object records available in before update, after update, before delete and after delete triggers. Next is, can we call a Apex class through trigger? So yes, and it is best practice if you uh, create separate apex class for trigger so it is suggested that don't write the business logic in the trigger itself instead create separate methods in your trigger handler class and then call those methods in the trigger so here is the example so you can see trigger then account trigger on account and event is before insert and then we are ca calling this before insert method which is defined in account trigger handler class and uh, as a parameter, we are passing trigger dot new context variable, which is uh, later in the class received in a new list variable. Trigger best practices. So write one trigger per object, bulkify your code so that you don't hit the governor limit. Logic less trigger. So as in previous question, I explained in trigger, don't write the logic. Instead, write the logic in your Apex class and those methods you can call in the trigger. Avoid using SOQL or DML inside for loop to avoid hitting governor limits. So don't write SOQL and DML inside the loop. Avoid nested loops and try to use map instead. So it will save your uh, runtime. And use static Boolean variable to avoid recursive trigger. What is recursive trigger? So it is also important question if you are uh, like giving interview as a fresher or as an experienced candidate as well and if you want to learn like uh, how these concepts work so uh, all those recorded videos are already available on studysalesforce.com so do visit in some scenarios it can happen that the result of the trigger can end up calling the same trigger again and again so this is the uh, scenario of recursive trigger this situation is known as recursive trigger to avoid this scenario, we should create a static variable and check the value of that variable before we execute anything in the trigger. Now, a uh, real-time use case. So when you update a record from UI, then trigger will be called. Now, in trigger as well, if you apply update DML, so it will call the same trigger again and again and ends up as triggers.
Can we apply validation through trigger? Yes, we can use add error method to apply validation through trigger. So I created an interesting video on that, which is available on studysalesforce.com. So you can do watch. Can a trigger call a batch class? Yes, we can call a batch class in trigger as we do in the normal Apex code. And if you don't remember the batch class concepts, so uh, you can watch them on studysalesforce.com. And I have also created uh, question and answers for uh, asynchronous Apex concepts as well. So you can do watch. Can a trigger make a call Apex callout method? Yes. We can call a callout method in Apex trigger, but the only condition is that it has to be an uh, asynchronous callout because the trigger flow cannot wait on the response received by the callout method. What is trigger bulkification? So it is important and uh, you should know this question's answer. Trigger should be able to handle single records as well as bulk records. So it means if you insert, update, delete, single record, then also your trigger should work properly. If you do bulk insertion, bulk updation, bulk deletion, maybe through data loader or import wizard. So in that case also, your trigger should work fine. Even insert, update, delete in bulk, we can do through Apex code as well. So for example, through anonymous window, if you are inserting five records, so it will call trigger. So your trigger should be uh, capable to handle those five records insertion. So that is basically known as handling bulkification through trigger. So you should write triggers that operate on collection of S objects. Trigger should perform efficient SOQL and DML operations. Is there any limit on numbers of records defined on an object? So we can define as many triggers on an object, but it is recommended to have one trigger per object as the order of execution of different trigger is not guaranteed and any trigger can start execution first. Mm -hmm. So instead writing different, different triggers, you can write one trigger and you can define the business logic in separate Apex classes or same Apex classes in different methods. And those methods you can call in the trigger so that you can manage your trigger smartly. And in, in that case, you can or, uh, maintain the order of execution inside that trigger itself. So you can uh, say like this method will call first and this second, this third. So this way you can control the execution sequence of the business logic. Order of execution in trigger. So this is another interesting question. So we have like almost 20 steps here. So when you save a record with an insert update or upsert statement, Salesforce performs the following events in order. So it loads the original record from the database or initialize the record for an upsert statement loads the new record field values from the request and overrides the old values, executes record trigger flows, those are configured to run before the record is saved, then execute all before triggers, then runs most system validation steps again and run custom validation rules. The only system validation that Salesforce doesn't run a second time, when the request comes from the standard UI edit page, is the enforcement of layout specific rules, then executes all duplicate rules, then saves the records to the database, but does not commit yet. Then executes all after triggers, execute assignment rules, execute auto response rules, execute workflow rules, execute escalation rules, execute processes, flows launched by processes, order is not guaranteed, then executes entitlement rules, then execute record trigger flows. Those are configured to run after the record is saved. If the record contains a rollup summary field or is part of a cross object workflow, performs calculations and update the rollup summary field in a parent record. Then parent record goes through save procedure. If the parent record is updated and a grand parent record contains a rollup summary field or is part of cross object workflow, performs calculations and updates the roll up summary field in the grand parent record. Grand parent record goes through safe procedure. Then executes criteria based sharing evaluation, then commits all DML operation to the database. After the changes are committed to the database, executes post commit logic such as sending email and executing 
enqueued asynchronous apex jobs including queuable jobs and future methods so these are the steps which are included in order of execution and triggers so these are the some questions that you can prepare for interviews so these all questions are related to apex trigger if you want to watch other uh, topic related questions so those are also available on my channel along with uh, on this website studysalesforce.com thank you